Imagine you are baking a rich chocolate cake. The recipe requires several ingredients, but one is essential for creating a delicious cake. Sugar. We may use sugar to make desserts, but plants produce similar sugar for their direct use and for complex carbohydrate formation. This valuable sugar is produced in the second phase of photosynthesis, referred to as the dark reaction or the Calvin cycle. As we have learned, the light reactions produce ATP and NADPH, which act as fuel for the light-independent reactions. For this process, think of the light-independent reactions as a track relay. Carbon is the baton passed from runner to runner and is converted into essential carbohydrates. Now, let's look at these three steps occurring in each relay. If we walk outside to observe plants in their natural environment, we can see the sun shining, the birds chirping, and the wind blowing softly through the trees. The sun shining upon the plant's leaves allows for the stomata to open and CO2 to enter. This begins the carbon fixation process, where carbon dioxide is converted into organic compounds. After CO2 enters a plant, the enzyme Rubisco attaches CO2 to a 5-carbon molecule known as ribulose biphosphate, or RUBP. The reaction between CO2 and RUBP produces an unstable intermediate that splits into two molecules of 3-phosphoglycerate. The plants we observe that use this method of carbon fixation are termed C3 plants. We will explain alternate methods of carbon fixation later in this episode. Now that carbon is fixed with RUBP, the molecules can be reduced. The reduction process occurs by ATP attaching a phosphate group to the 3 phosphoglycerate molecule, NADPH adding electrons, and an enzyme removing the phosphate group to form glyceraldehyde. Six molecules of glyceraldehyde, or G3P, are formed for every three molecules of CO2 that enter the cycle, and one lucky G3P is converted into a carbohydrate for immediate use. This leads us to the third and final step of the Calvin cycle where RUBP is regenerated. Remember the five molecules of G3P remaining? Well, they are quickly rearranged using the power of ATP. After the rearrangement, Three RUBP molecules are created that can accept CO2 again. The CO2 is now ready for another relay. Over the course of one relay, the byproducts of ATP and NADPH are not discarded, as one might think. Rather, they are converted into ADP and NADP plus for use in the light reaction. Thus, these transport molecules are utilized throughout the light and dark reactions. You will find that most of the plants around you use this C3 method of carbon fixation where CO2 enters the stomata during the daytime, Rubisco fixes the carbon, and G3P is produced. However, if we journey into harsher climates, many plants use alternative methods of carbon fixation to retain water and thrive in their environments. Think of sugarcane, a type of plant that thrives in the harsh regions of South Asia and Malaysia. Sugarcane is known as a C4 plant because the enzyme PEP carboxylase creates four carbon molecules by fixing CO2 instead of three carbon G3Ps. These four carbon molecules are assembled when the stomata are partially open and then transported to the bundle sheath cells. In these bundle sheath cells, CO2 is incorporated into the Calvin cycle. A second type of plant that is adapted to live in harsh conditions is a cam plant, such as a pineapple. A pineapple opens its stomata solely at night to receive the CO2 and stores it as organic acids in vacuoles. But when the sun is shining brightly, the stomata are closed. This way, the plant is able to conserve water and obtain CO2 at night. In the morning, CO2 is released from the vacuoles and available for use in the Calvin cycle. We have learned that the light-dependent reactions for photosynthesis provide the energy necessary for the Calvin cycle. The steps of the Calvin cycle include carbon fixation, reduction, and the regeneration of RUBP. C4 plants fix CO2 by making four carbon molecules, 
while cam plants store the CO2 as organic acids during the night. Carbon fixation, along with the other steps of the cycle, enable plants to make essential carbohydrates. If the light-independent reactions did not occur, we would not be marveling at the beautiful colors of flowers or enjoying delicious chocolate cake.